All right, so this is Mrs. Crane, and this is the electron configurations video. And in this video, you are going to learn how to write something called an electron configuration. Uh, and you're going to be able to write it directly from the periodic table. So it is sort of like an orbital diagram, but it's going to show the location of electrons in an atom um, faster and it's going to be shorter to write than the orbital diagram. It is going to be helpful to notice, as we're doing this, the relationship between elements as you move across the periodic table in order of atomic number. So I want you to remember that for neutral atoms, the atomic number, that's the smaller number on the periodic table, is the number of protons, but also, since these are neutral atoms, it's the number of electrons. So what this means is that hydrogen, over here the first element, has one electron, and helium, over here the second element, has two electrons, and lithium, over here, the third element has three electrons and so on and so forth, right? So, in other words, as we move along the periodic table, the number of electrons keeps going up by one. We're also going to need a carefully labeled periodic table to help us write the electron configurations. So, I would like you right now to turn to the table in the front of your packet um, or pause the video and print one from my website. I also need to get out a pencil, and I would say a pencil, not a pen. Uh, colored pencils or highlighters can help, but they're not necessary. So if you need to get those things, uh, pause the video now before moving on. All right, so you should have this periodic table of elements in front of you. And the first thing I would like you to do is I would like you to label the periods, the rows. So here is period one, and I'd like you to also label it over here. Here is period two, and you're going to also label it over here. Period three, label it over here. Uh, period four also labeled right here between zinc and gallium, and period 5, also labeled right here between cadmium and indium. Uh, now, there's another thing that I need you to do, and it actually relates to uh, something that I referred to in the orbital diagram, where you may remember that the um, 4s orbital actually came before the 3d orbital and so that's going to seem a little confusing for the moment but you just need to trust me I want you to put a 3 right here between calcium and scandium and a 4 right here after strontium and uh, I will explain uh, how that numbering gets a little bit out of order uh, it relates back to quantum mechanics as I've referred to before all right Ready for the next set of labels? So, um, I need you to somehow note uh, that the first two columns, so this one here starting with hydrogen, and this one here starting with beryllium, we really call those groups or families, right, are all going to be part of what we call the S block of the periodic table. What that is going to mean is that um, all of these elements are going to have their valence electrons, those are their outermost electrons, uh, in some sort of an S suborbital. Okay? Remember, you can pause the video at any point uh, if this is taking you longer. Uh, the next thing I need you to do is also note that helium over here it's almost as if it belongs right here next to hydrogen. Every once in a while you'll see periodic tables that have taken the liberty of just moving helium right over there. 
Uh, so helium is actually also part of that S block. So helium is another atom that's going to have its valence electrons in an S suborbital. Okay. Uh, then I need you to somehow note that this entire block right here is what we will call the P block. So it does not include helium, uh, but it's all of these families, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorines, um, family, which is the halogens, and then uh, the noble gases all except for helium. And so because they are the P block, that's telling us that all of these atoms have their valence electrons in some sort of a P suborbital. It might be 2P or 3P or 4P, so on and so forth, but some sort of a P or dumbbell-shaped orbital. And last but not least, all of the transition metals are going to uh, be noted as being part of the D block of the periodic table, meaning that all of their uh, valence electrons are found in some sort of a D suborbital. Uh, not important for you to know, but I will mention this because people often ask, uh, the lanthanide and actinide series, which would be down here below the periodic table, um, are actually part of the F block. So their valence electrons end in some sort of an F suborbital, but you will not need to deal with that at all. So please make sure you have your periodic table fully labeled. Uh, and I want to make sure that you noticed uh, why we were labeling these things the way we did. Um, so we were labeling with them with the letters of the suborbitals, and elements in each of these respective sections of the periodic table have their valence electrons, their outermost electrons, in that kind of a suborbital. So all of these elements, which does include helium, have their valence electrons in an S suborbital. These are all ending in a D suborbital, and these all in a P suborbital. Um, and this is going to be something that you are going to need to remember. So you're going to want to be able to um, sort of recreate this little blocking of the periodic table um, onto a periodic table for use during your test. So we can actually figure out where all the electrons of an atom are, not just its valence electrons, based on its location on the periodic table. So I want to remind you of something we talked about early on in this class, which is right here, elements in the first period, the sort of horizontal back and forth row, have just uh, one orbital, just one shell around their nucleus. It's the 1s suborbital, actually. And elements in the second period have two orbitals, meaning two shells around their nucleus. So the first shell is the 1s suborbital, and the second shell actually has the 2s suborbital and the 2p suborbital in it. So what that means is, if you look up here, hydrogen and helium are the only two elements in the first period, so they have just one orbital, one shell around their nucleus, and then uh, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, all these in the second period, have uh, two orbitals. So they have two shells around their nucleus. And we could go on and say the same type of a thing for the third period and the fourth period and so on. So if you didn't catch all of that, don't worry too much. Uh, often doing some examples helps, and when we get to class, you'll do even more practice. This is one of those things where you just really have to practice quite a bit uh, before you get comfortable. All right, so let's try writing an electron configuration for beryllium. The first thing we're going to do, uh, just more for communication's sake, is we're going to write down the symbol beryllium. Um, and 
technically if you were in a more advanced class they'd ask you to also write the mass number on top and the atomic number on the bottom if you don't write that I'm not going to take points off um, but if you plan to go on to take higher level chemistry classes it's good to be in the habit and then what we're going to do is we're going to read the periodic table all the way from the first element, hydrogen, we'll always start there no matter what, in order of atomic number. So we'll move then through helium, or here's helium back in its normal place, through lithium, and all the way through beryllium. And we'll stop there because that's the element that we're writing the configuration for. So what we're going to do is we're just kind of kind of make some notations. We're going to say, okay, if we start with helium, or excuse me, with hydrogen, we're starting off in the first period, and we are starting off in the S block. And we're going to notice that we have two elements, hydrogen and also helium, that are in that first period and in the S block. And so we're going to put a little two up here. Thank you.